he stopped to give his daughter a kiss on the cheek. This was rather awkward since I was still balls deep. <laughs> on the first episode of Help I Sexted My Boss in 2024... We're back for the new year and we've got loads to talk about, including my New Year's Eve party. A superstar rapper has used my image to promote his new upcoming album, Knife and Fork. And a teacher got in touch to say that one of his pupils may have seen him buying condoms and lube in Tesco. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it with all your friends, like, comment, do whatever you want, spread us about. Did you get an email in your junk bag this week? Well, uh, only weird ones, but why? Yeah, Anything I, in particular? I got one of... Ben with a gag in his mouth. He looked really terrified asking for a ransom, but I just thought it was spam. Oh, delete. Fishing or something? Yeah, block. He looked really scared. It's probably AI. Yeah, I thought so. Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, how do you recover from all the common clinking you witnessed at New Year's? Are you writing the scripts now? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. And do I need to carry a knife and fork around just in case I want to eat a pear? <laughs> and, of course, what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? We should also add to that when mm. you stop saying Happy New Year. Yeah. But we're not usual agony ants, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert with 18.5 million followers on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, we're not Jordan North, radio presenter and 0.8 million follower Instagram account. I'm more Finest Brie, you're more Derry Lee. Very good. And that's from Peter. Thank you, Peter. I also like Brie. You like Brie? Oh, I've, I've ate my body weight in cheese this year. Really? Oh, God. What do you have your Brie with, or do you just have it on its own? On a cracker. I like a wheat cracker, Jacob's Wheat Cracker. Nice. High in fibre, but they're the best crackers. Do you do Brie and apple? No, I can't say I've ever That's had Brie and nice. apple. That's quite nice. Little slither of apple I, with a bit of brie. I like the smoked cheese as well. I had loads of that over Christmas. I think Did it's, you? I think it's Norwegian or something like that. I had my pot salut. Yes, you like that. My borsin. Borsan. Oh, Borsan. Yeah. I prefer... <laughs> I prefer Philadelphia Intense. Do you? Mm, Is it called... Yes. In, why, are you eat, why are you eating it in tents? No. <laughs> what, when you're camping? Oh, camping, I'm on good me. form. <laughs> I'm on good form. Yes. Now, are you doing... It's a new bottle of De Bonnet, but are you doing damp January? What I am. Are you doing? I'm doing half dry jam, like I usually do. Just just a little reset for two weeks. So, so do you I'm, want one or not? No, you, you crack on, sweetheart. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have two weeks reset. I'm going to have football this weekend. It's going to be hard to go oh, watch. Oh, who, who are you playing? Uh, we're playing Spurs. It's going to be hard to go and watch Burnley. We are, ooh. Fresh. Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> Um, it's going to be hard to watch Burnley without having a drink. Not that like, I can't, but... You'll have a drink. I won't. I bet you you'll have I won't. a drink. And when I... When, oh, God. <laughs> when I put my mind to it, I'm good. Just a little reset. The okay. first drink I'm going to have is when we go to Nancy Pelosi's... Um, Alex Pulitzer's. Alex Pulitzer's hotel. Okay. So in, in a few weeks' time. In a few weeks' time. Very excited. Which I'm looking forward to. Well, I'll just toast on my no, own, then, shall I? It's bad luck to toast No, it's water. not bad luck to toast it with is. water. It no, is. It is. It well, for a start, you've drunk before. You... I'm not going to toast. I'll... It's, it's not bad, bad luck. luck to, it was only bad luck to toast with water in the oh. days when water was full of bacteria. Don't talk to me about superstitions. New Year's Eve. Yes. For, I, forgot to, I forgot to walk in the house and walk back out again. What? On New Year's Eve, you meant to, um, you meant to walk out the house. The, dark, the person with the darkest hair walks out the back door and walks in through. The, the... person with the darkest hair? Yeah. I have never heard it's this. It's to bring good luck in. And then on New Year's Day. Were I'm... you told this as a child because people didn't want you in the room? No. It's, it asked, there'll be loads of people listening now going like that. And then on New Year's Day, you're not allowed to do any laundry. You can't put a washer. Oh, I've heard that one before. Because if you, if you wash your clothes on New Year's Day, you wash someone out of your family. And I had got into a big argument on New Year's Day about it. Wow. I, I was asked to respect my culture, to which I was told it's Karen culture. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree with that. Well, here's the solo toast to 2024. To 2024. Let's hope it's a big one. There you go. Lovely. As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexandmyboss or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of his luxury greeting cards with executive cell seal envelopes. The address for that is on the website sexedmyboss.com. 
the uh, the stationers of uh, New Bond Street are up in arms at self steel envelopes. By the way, why? I had a Christmas card from uh, Ruth at Smythston, who is my personal stationery uh, supplier. You have a personal stationery supplier. Yes, I do. And, uh, and uh, David Cameron's wife used to be the head of Smythston. She was the creative director oh. a while ago. Yeah, and um, yes, saying that she was horrified that we're advocating self-seal envelopes. But uh, Ruth, I'll say this to you. If you had to lick what I've got to lick, you'd want a self-seal envelope. <laughs> I mean, I write a lot of letters. I can't lick them all. What is a self-seal envelope? Well, it's, you know, where you've got the... It's already got a bit of glue and you uh, peel off the strip. And is that a bit common? So. Um, I mean, look, etiquette reflects the society that we're living in and things evolve. And back in the day, you had to sort of moisten it yourself. Although, actually, in the titles of Keeping Up Appearances, Hyacinth has that little sticky pad for the stamp, and you would use the same thing for letters as well. Oh, okay. To moisten it. It's just a sponge, basically. Oh, right. Um, but you can use your tongue, uh, but not on a self-seal envelope. Oh, okay. Anyway, how loads to catch up on. Mm. Lo loads of preamble today. Yes. So we'll give you a little warning. H how was your Christmas? How was your New Year? Christmas was lovely. Yep. My favourite present was... A meat defrosting plate. What's a meat defrosting? Just a so metal it's me plate? It's metal, but it's supposedly designed and it defrosts meat at double the speed, but oh, safely. I need one of them. Yes. I took some... Is it good with fish? I took some salmon out the other day. Well, I wouldn't know. On New Year's... Oh, you don't like fish? No. It still weren't defrosted. Well, so I did, I did beef mince yesterday. So normally a whole 500 gram block of beef mince might take on the side most of the day yeah. in the fridge overnight. Mm -hmm. You stick it on this uh, plate... Sort of, it's sort of black metal plate with some ridges. Literally in about three and a half hours, it was ready to go. Do you, is it a heated plate? No. No, you plug I it in. I don't know how it works. No. Oh. It is literally standalone. Who got you that? My mother. She's a good one. Yeah. He's always whinging about his meat, darling. Oh, here we go. He's saying his meat is never, never defrosted. So I said, Brian, we must get a defrosting meat plate. Look, I will, in fact, actually, this Show is... Me it. I said, I mean, it was a very odd video for me to send to my mother of me touching my meat... But there, that was the. Uh, oh, wow. That's... That was underfrosted. Or, sorry, that was frozen, as mm. we often call it. And then here, look, you see, a few hours later, completely fine. Wow. And that's all it is. It's just that little plate. How do you get on with them induction hobs? I pissing eight them. Yeah, I don't me. love an induction hob. I'm going to, if I get a new kitchen in a couple of years, I'm going to save up. Okay. I'm going to get a hob, just go back to gas. Yet my key is desperate for gas. Right, they do me, I do. Especially so last fit, night. And you put like a bit of a tea towel goes on it. It's like beeping and all oh, goes when, off. when you clean it as well, oh. when I spritz it afterwards with the degreasing spray, and then beep, 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 because it's sort of slightly wet. Yes, I know it's slightly wet. They Does won't shut up. And then last night it was slow because we were using all four oh, rings last yeah. night. Yeah, and it's... No, the, and they don't... And, the, and it does that pulse. Even, name drop, even when I did that, thing with mary berry she struggled with it as well does she yeah yeah obviously in a couple of weeks if induction decide to sponsor an episode <laughs> we'll be all over it we'd love an induction hop but for now they just do i, yeah, I see them i they're much better from a safety point of view. yeah i do get that and i think they might be better for energy as well probably yeah i would imagine in 10 years time when the technology is developed they'll actually be really great yeah but at the moment they're half, a bit frustrating half my pans don't work on them either Oh, still got like, still got like all my cheap pans from uni that don't work. No, nah, you need yeah. to get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go and invest in some new pans. And, uh, get them in the January sales. I'm, what I'm was your favourite Christmas present? Uh, I I got a bottle of uh, whiskey that I've mm. always wanted. Blue Label, I believe. It was Johnny Walker Blue. I'm very, very lucky. Didn't he used to do Radio 2 Sounds of the 70s? <laughs> Has he branched out into whiskey? Yes, he has. Johnny Walker. Johnny and Walker. No, you know, I love my whiskey. I've, mm. always, I've never even tried it before because even in bars and stuff, it's, I think some bars charge like 40, 50 quid for a shot of Johnny Walker, blue. And what? that's about that much, is yeah. it? Yeah. So I got some for Christmas. And it was, wow. Yeah. Have you tried it yet? Yeah, I thought, I'm going to try it. And then I went back onto my normal whiskey. Yeah. Which I like, like mm. my house whiskey. And someone said, can you tell the difference? I said, it's like, it's like Glenn's vodka. You remember Glenn's vodka on Park when you were a kid? No. <laughs> no? Never had the tiny little bottle of Glenn's vodka on the cap while I was listening to N-dubs. On a oh, that was my childhood all over. On a Samsung. No, I was recreating the Bible with Beanie Babies. You of course know this. you were. Well, it's just like that now. It's right. Like when you get a good, you can definitely tell the quality. You can but, taste the difference. That was my favourite. Um, I had a, a lovely time at Christmas. Thanks for asking, yeah. I did ask. It was uh, Lucas's christening. 
Yes, your yes, your uh, your nephew, not my former luxury flatmate. Went went really well. Yeah, good. No fights. You yeah. sure? There was a ball ball pit fight where we all started chucking balls at each other, but that's but that sort of play fight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And how old is Lucas now? Six months. Six months, and he's crawling. Is he? Mm. Gosh, yeah, where will so. he be at university next? Graham and Wendy were there. They came over. Yeah, they came over. So did they do actual? Where did they do Christmas? Oh, you should see what Wendy got me. For, oh, they stayed in a hotel in Burnley. And oh, okay. Like, so they were over here. Brothers. For um, they got me and made me open it in this pub in Burnley in front of everyone. They got me um, a fire pit. A fire pit. A massive fire pit. Yeah. So did they not just deliver that to your house? That might no, have been easier. Got delivered to my grandma's. So. Um, wow. And my dad got a drone. Gosh. My dad can barely. Been married to a drone for most of his <laughs> oh, life. Oh. I showed her that clip as well. Sorry, Wendy. I showed her that clip. Mm -hmm. You said, how's Wendy still a cow? <laughs> what did she say? Uh, yeah, it's not repeatable. <laughs> Especially, on, and we repeat a lot of things on this podcast. But yeah, um, she got me drone. You can barely park, park a car. Yeah, mm -hmm. car can yep. park. Um, but yeah, how was, how was, um, how was New Year's Eve? Well, it was lovely. Thank you. So for those that don't know, uh, Jordan very sweetly invited Mikey and me over for uh for a new year's bash yep. which was nice and uh, it was i mean latterly on this podcast last year you were like oh no you got to bring something and i got a bit uppity that you had changed because originally you didn't say you need to bring a dish then you announced that you did so then mike and i spent quite some time working out what we were going to oh, bring bless you. and then about two days before you said um oh no no we're doing it now it's sausage surprise. Because, Mum, again, when Genuinely, we did sausage surprise. Wendy got in my head, she went, no, you can't do a picky tea. It's, you know, it, it's too much hassle. It'll be all out on the side. And you, if you've not got enough oven space, and I was like, do you know what? She's actually got a point here. So I mm. thought, I can't do my chilli again. I'll do a sausage surprise. Yeah. And I was very surprised by your sausage. Thank you. I knew that would annoy you. No one else would bother, and I knew that would annoy you. It well, saved can you I cooking. Also, can I also... I spent a few days before, Chelsea and James, who also came, uh, I saw them for lunch. And um, how Chelsea and James got invited... I mean, how's this for etiquette? So you bumped into a mutual friend of Chelsea's called Hannah, I believe, at a party weeks ago. You then say to Hannah at this party in, I think it was November or December... When she came up and said, oh, I believe, you know, Chelsea, Ty, have you chat? You said to Hannah, oh, can you see what they're doing New Year's Eve and if they'd like to come round for, for tea? So I, Hannah then, te so the invitation doesn't actually come from you. I can't remember this. I was shown the text. The, the invitation comes from Hannah. No, I... Who it wasn't even invited. I spoke to J-Ro. Right, well, maybe they didn't communicate. But no one calls him J-Ro these days, apart from the original Manchester lot, I'm a right, Stu, because they'll always be J-Ro to me. Right, mm. that's James Robinson. James Robinson, oh, and yeah. um, he can hear on Chris Miles' show. Yes. Miles Moore, he produces Miles on Radio X. Anyway, um, I texted him ages ago. Who's had, I can't remember. Oh, what party was it? I don't know. I'm at so many showbiz parties these oh, days. God. I can't, I'm, not, I'm really not, <laughs> I'm really not. Um, I can't remember that. Did you know what you said as soon as you walked in again? Oh, God, no, don't. So stop it. <laughs> infamously, when he first came to my little holding flat that I had for a year mm. in, um, where was that? London. In London, yeah. I, I, he walked in and you uh, famously said, well, it's lovely on the inside. I, I have no recollection of that. Do you remember when you walked into the living room? What, of your new place? Yeah. Which living room? The <laughs> When he came, the upstairs. Don't, also, I don't want anyone... I've decided as well. I noticed right. you reposted me and then deleted Delete, it. Right, I know. <laughs> right, okay. I, don't, I, I know I'm really anal about it. But don't, I don't get more anal than Jordan. I don't want, I don't want anyone posting from inside my house. Because I had this discussion before. I man. asked if I no, could post I that photograph. It's, it's fine. And then I just get really weird about it. And everyone was posting it. And then you put that up. It's lovely to see John in one of his drawing rooms. Small estate drawing rooms. And anyway, when you came into the small estate drawing, drawing room, room yeah. you said... Does that couch have enough cushions? No, because, Jordan, I, was like, I have never seen so many scatter cushions on, on one piece of furniture. It was, they perfectly play. What, you wouldn't go into Soho House and go, oh, they've got too much cushions on here? Well, no, because you're able to see the seat of the sofa. Oh, well, sorry. No, but it looked beautiful. Oh, thank you. I mean, I love it. And also, especially now I'm getting old, I love a scatter cushion behind my back because it helps me sit up. Yeah. But, but it, it, there were quite a lot. Stop saying my house is it's really not. And everyone, every time I DM now, 
I've, like, I'm not po- I don't like posting from my house anyway. Oh, I'm so- well, you posted the next day of you looking rough at your in the kitchen. Yeah, it's that last time. Okay, that's so no more house. M- it, 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 I, I want to sign them off. Is that control freak? I want to sign them off before you post hit. them. Sorry, if the Jordan of five years ago could hear that. <laughs> um, also, I've I've decided that I abs- it's the run up to Christmas that mm. I don't like yes. itself. It's that two weeks before, week before. It's okay. So stressful. That's all right. You've got fifty-one weeks left. I'm always so busy that we run up, but I I love Christmas Day itself. Mm. I love Boxing Day, but I, and a lot of people hate it. I bloody love Limbo Week. Right. I, I know it's always grey and it pisses down with rain every year yeah, without fail. Yeah, particularly this year. It was, it was miserable, but it's because no one bothers me. Everybody's off, so I don't have to do any emails, any texts, anything like that. Mm. And I can just sit in my own shit and watch telly all Ooh. week. I love it. Not literally, but... Did you watch anything nice? Did you watch... Um, did you watch Saltburn? We have now watched Saltburn. Okay. Yes. What do you... Th- uh, spoilers. We won't spoil yeah. anything for anyone. Are you a vampire? Am I a vampire? No, I'm definitely not a vampire. Please. I'm surprised. I don't think many people listening to this are vampires because that's weird. I'm surprised we've not had a letter about that. Well, we haven't started yet. We might. Can I just say, Mm. I I thought it was fantastic. I I, sometimes things don't live up to the hype, but I I thought it was brilliant. Mm. Both of them, Barry Keoghan and Keegan, probably, and Jacob Elordi. Mm. Oh, yeah, I knew you'd knew his name. <laughs> Can I also say, on a completely unrelated note, what a lovely bath you've got. <laughs> what beautiful taps. That was a fun game at New Year's. Isn't it? Yes. Um, do, do you reckon... Talk about assault burn. I've always thought about this. If there's yes. any actors listening or anyone... Any that's, actors Yeah, that's done a nude scene. Do you reckon before... Mainly male actors or however they ad- identify... Do you reckon before they do a nude scene, do you reckon they get it on semi lob on? Well, why did you ask this to Robbie, our intimacy coordinator who came I on? I know, we should have asked. Yeah. I don't think that's encouraged. You know, like when you, you sometimes get in shower at school and you'd give it a little... I'm sorry? You'd just give it a little, like... No, little, we had cubicles. Little little helicopter just to get a bit of blood into it. A little helicopter? You know, sometimes... I, I see, Right, I'm not joking. I see lads do it in gym these days. Because I, I, like... I, Where's your gym again? Like, like, they'll just give it a little... a little, look, Just get blood going to it. I'm sure actors must do that. Mustn't Well, because I think... But, but Robbie did tell us... Remember, they wear, like, m- um, modesty pouches. Yeah, but Barry didn't. No, Barry didn't. But that could have been a prosthetic. And apparently the grave scene was improvised. The grave scene. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. But I've always wanted to know that. Mm. Mm. Mikey didn't know what was coming in the bath scene, as it were. I don't think that was and the worst scene. No, it wasn't. But he was at the point of watch, at the point where that happens. That's probably the worst thing that mm. has happened so far. I think the vampire that, scene was. That's probably worse. Yes, worst, that is definitely yeah. worse. Um, but yeah, the um, Mikey's face was. I wish I'd picked up my phone in time to record him squealing. Loads of people did. But alas. Just going back to yours, by the way, it'll probably arrive today. I have probably written the worst thank you letter I have ever written to you to thank you for New Year's Eve. I'm very... Just not in terms of what I've said, in terms of how I formatted it. It's a lovely picture of um, the late Queen Elizabeth and the late Duke of Edinburgh sitting next to each other uh, on a sofa in Windsor. Um, And I only had one of them. So that's why you've got it. I didn't bother rewriting the stamps in the wrong place. Um. I mean, it probably won't even turn up. I made it. I've I've written your name wrong. I've put Northy, not North. I don't know what I don't know what happened. I've then written an apology for that in the place where the stamp was meant to go, which is why the stamp is on the bottom right corner. It's an absolute really? disaster. I wouldn't have noticed. You No, you really will. Can, and I know why this was. Mm. You had your first hangover on New Year's Day. No, I didn't. You were hammered. I Will was he, not. You was... When you left, yes. everyone went, oh, God, he were a bit pissed, weren't oh, he? Oh, shut up. No, no they, they did. Honestly, a few people said it. Yeah. I felt a little bit tired the next day, but <laughs> that was about pissed. it. You were pissed. We started on champagne. Yes. And then um, what else did you have? I made you a couple of gins. A couple of gins. Did you have some wine with your sausage surprise? I think I might have had some wine. And then I had a sip of a picante that you all did. I don't love those, so. J. Rowe and Chelsea made them. They did? They were, I had, I you was... made Chelsea do the veg. Yeah, because you know what it's like? When you come to mine, everyone gets stuck in. Yeah. Well, I didn't. Chelsea did the veg. She did a very good job of it as well. She did? Yeah. Yes. Um, 
And you did your lovely brownies as well. Which I did nice. my lovely brownies. It, were those? I, I was I was going to have a, my last drink on New Year's Day because I like a drink on New Year's Day. It's like a Sunday, but those pecanties did me over, so mm. I was too rough. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, so in other news, should we just talk about the fact that I have been used to promote Skepta's upcoming album? Yes. We. What is? What has gone on here? I sent this on your. I have Insta absolutely story. no idea. So on New Year's Day, suddenly my phone went alight with people sending it to me. Skepta, Skeps, mm -hmm. as he is to close friends, um, sent, posted a, a grid post of a series of photos promoting an upcoming album called Knife and Fork, I believe. And me eating the pear uh, was, with the knife and fork, was, I think, picture three. Yeah, it was amazing. Bizarrely, Picture 9 was the set of Matilda the Musical, which I think is a bit weird, but anyway, I don't really get that. That's a, a fair play to you. Did yeah. You, did you share it? I popped it, pop it on the story. Have, have you been invited to the album launch party? It's only a matter of time. I've got a couple of mates that are huge Skepta fans, so yeah. if you can get some tickets for that, that'd be well, great. Well, I can't promise. I've got many, many of my friends want to come. We're I, all big Skepta fans. We love his harmonies. Fair play. Mm. Oh, we, we should take you to a Skepta concert gig. Concerts. Concert. Oh, recital, a Skepta recital. You and Mikey at a Skepta gig would be brilliant. Oh, also, yes. right, I want to take you to a Skepta gig. You know, I've took you to Benidorm. No, I'll be taking you to a Skepta gig. Oh, yeah, sorry. You know, I've I'll have VIP access. You know, I've took you to Benidorm. Yes. I really, really want to take you to the darts. <sighs> have you watched it this year? I haven't watched it any year. It, I, now, a lot of people think I would jump in on the bandwagon. Back me up here. I've always loved the darts, especially the World Championship Finals. Hmm. I've watched it every year. And where do they take place? They take place at Ali Pali. Oh, okay. It used to be at Circus Tavern. So I Circus Tavern. I first watched it. I was I remember New Year's Day, I was flicking through, I just got a telly in my room. And I was watching Phil Taylor playing Kevin Painter. 2004. I don't know who any of these people are. 2004 final. Phil Taylor, greatest greatest living sports person on this planet. 16 world titles. You can top that. I think it's 16. Okay. And a lot of people say Tiger Woods and he tennis players and what have you, 16 mm. world titles. But it, it was really good this year because Luke Littler was only 16. Yes. Mm. Now, he's the one that he's caused uh, media interest because he is only 16, but he sort of looks 40. But, I mean, that's unfair. That's unfair. And a lot of people were saying he's actually not 16. And I have got proof, black and white proof, that he's 16. But he got his driving license. I haven't got his driving license because he wouldn't be able to drive because he's not old enough. No, true. Um, I've got his birth certificate. No, I haven't got his You've birth got certificate. You've got his birth no. certificate. But this is all you need to know to prove that um, the runner-up, Luke Littler, is 16. He did an interview. Now, this is when he got through to the semi-finals. He won £100,000. Okay? Wow. And he got asked by a reporter what he was going to spend it on. And if this doesn't prove he's 16, I don't know what will. He said uh, he's going to treat himself to some Under Armour tracksuits, he told The Telegraph, and get himself a new coat and just get some FIFA points for his Xbox. <laughs> If that doesn't prove... I mean, he does to sound like a generic dance player, though. If that doesn't prove that he's 16, I don't know what does. Okay. So there you go. What... Well, well done. So he's won it, has he? Mm -hmm. No, he came runner-up. Oh, he came runner-up. But I'd love to take you to the darts. We could dress up. Da, 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 My da, brother da, da. went to the darts fairly recently. Of course and, he and did. And dressed up as Mr. Incredible. Co did he actually? Yeah. You and your brother, I forget how totally different yeah, you Jonathan are. Jonathan messaged James going, I forget how different you are to your brother. Wow! 180. I I can't. Yeah, just your brother trying to be down with the lads. I think he can do it. I don't think he can. It's like when he. It's a bit like Ben. Normally he's like woo. Who? Oh yeah. Sorry. Are we not? Are we not allowed to mention it? <laughs> we move on. Normally he's like woo. Yeah, I'm at the darts. And then when all the boys come in, he's like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Up. Yeah, no, my, I had a really tough upbringing. My dad was a drug dealer. Yeah, he was inside for most of my childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mum, my dad, I never knew her. Nah, I never knew her. Alcoholic. Then at home, he's like, Mummy! <laughs> um, also, because obviously New Year, new people, etc., that sort of thing, should we just have a little revision on gym etiquette? Because you go to the gym a lot. Yep. I go to the gym enough. My new gym's opening soon, I can't wait. Your new gym? Yeah, because I had to go to a... God, we really have reversed roles, but I had to go to a lesser gym Oh, just before, well, in October time. Oh, because they were redoing it? Yeah, so oh. I joined a lesser gym and the fucking watch got nicked. I'm <gasps> so gutted about that. Yeah, that is sad. So my watch got nicked, so I can't wait for my new gym to open. I get very annoyed with, and it, I say 
it could be women as well, but obviously I don't go in the women's changing room, so I, I'm going to sort of slightly um, slander all men here. Men who use the changing room as an extension of their office and are on their phones, the only thing you should be doing in the changing room is getting changed to or from your gym kit. Oh, what? You do not need to be sitting on the bench, doing emails, sending messages, what? What? making phone calls, How's because that you doing are hogging any... space. How's that doing any harm to you? The changing rooms are not massive where I go to. And it particularly, unless, if it's deserted, I'm less fast. Is this the fancy gym that... Uh, well, it doesn't. Yes, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where the gym but that's is. That's a very like workers' commute. You go in, in there, the changing room. Oh, for God's sake! It's just irritating. I'm sure it happens in all gyms. Let me know, Gene Divas, if this happens in your gyms. People using their phones to send emails. Just quickly get changed, shower, blah, blah, go, move on, create some space. Okay. Big thing. I also wipe the equipment down before you use it and after you use it. You only have to wipe it down before because not many people wipe it down afterwards. Are you a wiper? If I'm sweaty, yes. No, no. Well, I hope... can't be asked walking. Well, if you're not sweaty, you're not doing it right. Spray. A J cloth. <laughs> you could just get some blue blue roll. It's not very good for the environment. If I've been on it and I'm dripping buckets, of course I'll wipe it down. I drip bouquets. <laughs> It's a lovely joke. It's a very good joke. <laughs> Thank you. Are you are you doing a little New Year reset then? Ish. Ish. I mean, I had a box of chocolates last night, but only because Mikey brought them home from work. So they were giving them as gifts. And he was like, you can have them. So I did. You've no discipline at all, have you? Up until that point, I was being quite yeah. good. But um, uh, that says me. I can't. I've not either. But I've done I've done two two gym cross trainer things this year so far. Oh, God. When I put my Desperate Housewives on, on the elliptical and off I go. Yeah, you told them on that on New Year's Eve. You watch a lot of programs on. I do. That's how I watch TV on my phone. Do you lift? Do you lift heavy? Do you lift any weights? No, don't that's be how, silly. That's how you can. That's how you get toned up. I, I don't used, want to be toned up. I never used to lift weights as well, but just. I'm happy enough with my personality. You know what they say: if you don't do the kills, you don't get the girls. <laughs> we'll keep trying. Should we go to the etymology of the week? <laughs> yes, please. What have you got for us today, William? Hansen? We're going to do the history. Two weeks in of old Lang Syne. Here's the jingle. It's William, William, the etiquette geek. His knowledge, knowledge, is quite unique. He'll give you manners, manners, a subtle tweak. It's time for William's etiquette, etiquette, etymology of the week. Cha cha cha. And I'll tell you the history of Old Lang Syne, which we all probably sung at New Year, after these messages. All right, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, it's now time for William's Etiquette Etymology of the Week. We're going to be doing your problems and dilemmas very soon. So what is it again this week? It's the history of Old Lang Syne. Did we do it at mine? We did, yes. Sorry again about the countdown being late. That was the BBC's <laughs> fault. Of course it was. We were on the iPlayer. You like the Daily Mail, aren't you? A bit delayed. A bit delayed. Uh, so why do we sing Old... What's it? I can never spell... Old Lang Syne. Old Lang Syne. Uh, well... Translated literally, Old Lang Syne means old long since, but a better translation would be for the sake of old times. Written by Robert Burns, as many people know, in 1788, based on an old folk song, but it was first set to the tune that we all sing uh, roughly 10 years later in 1799. Now, the song began its associations with New Year during the 19th century after it was taken up by the Freemasons and other fraternities. Robert Burns was a Freemason. Um, gradually, this spread into the wider community, and by the 1880s, Old Lang Syne was sung across much of Scotland. So in Scotland, uh, they started it. Um, traditionally, people would gather outside just before midnight by a clock, and obviously they'd break into it then. Um, during the 20th century, though, so it's relatively recent, uh, it spread across the Anglosphere, uh, thanks to radio and later TV. However, not in Burnley, where due to a translation error by a certain Mr. Athelthwaite in 1907, the locals believed it to be about the old long sign to Hebron's chippy found at the foot of Pendle Hill, and the song never caught on. Is that real? As true as I'm sitting on this elephant. That's amazing! Yeah. Oh, right, you're making it up. <laughs> oh, did you do... I just wrote that for oh, the that sake of amusement. Very good. Um, Thank you. Two things. Yes. Are, are the Freemasons still a thing? I wouldn't know. Don't they do like a... No, I, no, I'm not a Freemason. Let's not start this. Oh, my God. No, I'm not a Freemason. I know someone in your... Brian's a Freemason, Brian isn't is he? not a Freemason. He so is. He's not a Freemason. He so is. He is not a Freemason. Is it still a thing? Apparently, like, yeah, you could get pulled up for speeding. You do, like, a weird little handshake. You go like, 
Yeah. Oh, what was... You are a Freemason, I aren't just you? just tickled your hand, for God's sake. Um, Lucas, not your nephew, Lucas, my former luxury flatmate, and I um, went round the Freemason Hall in... You can do tours and go in, in um, Hoburn, not far from here, actually, and we did... <laughs> I'm sorry to any Freemasons listening. We did walk round with our trouser legs rolled up. <laughs> I don't get it. Because supposedly you can tell, if, like, it, it's a secret sign. As they roll up one of their, their left trouser leg up a little bit to flash a bit of ankle. It's not really true, but it's sort of, it's the common, so we, we walk around the halls with our trouser legs rolled up. We found it funny. Weren't that one direction? What? They got, I always, you know, when all of a sudden lads started showing a bit of ankle in like the early 2000s. Oh, that's just because they couldn't afford proper trousers. No, they were like they started showing a bit of ankle on the mm. X Factor and then for the first album and for you know like, everyone stopped wearing socks. Did they? Uh, second thing, just to clarify, not a Freemason. But is it still a thing? I think they you do see if you get on at Hoban Tube often or off in London, you often do see them. They're with the briefcases and the black jackets and not very nice material suits. Why do we why do we link hands? Sorry, at, um, for old lang syne. What are you doing? Linking hands. Going How on. are Anton Dick? <laughs> <laughs> You're not funny. <laughs> um, well, in Scotland, um, the song is sung whilst holding hands with the person next to you in a circle. So you actually hold like this, so you don't cross. You only cross at the last verse, and then you cross. Whereas outside Scotland, those rules don't apply, and we just cross heart arms. So sort of the etiquette changes. And actually, can you remember, you remember that sort of, it's quite funny, the picture of the late Queen Elizabeth and Tony Blair. And Sherry. Yes, doing. And of course, the Queen looked confused, and the Queen didn't know whether to cross or not, because of course, she sort of, although is British, is sort of probably slightly more Scottish, or would identify as Scottish a bit more. Would she, would she say she was Scottish? Well, her mother was Scottish. Would she say she was English, or? Well, she's British. She'd say, she would never say she was English. Well, I don't know what Scotland she said. Scotland was a favourite place, wasn't it? Anyway. We know that, yeah. So, she, uh, anyway, it was all a bit confusing as to what she, she should do. And, you know, she was doing this because, again, it's more Scottish. So, we're not, I'm not coming down on any side there, but I'm sure there was a bit of confusion. I don't love Old Lang Syne, if I'm honest. It was mm. nice at yours. J, J. Rowe and I broke into Scottish reeling. Did you notice? No, did, did we do it at mine? Mm. I was pissed by then. Did yeah. we play it or did we just all sing it? I think we all just oh, broke into it. On the video of no one knows the words. <laughs> no one knows the words. Oh, look at Sean and Jake. Little Jake <laughs> having time. What do you call him? Turn up the feel good. Jake. You call him turn up the feel good. No, Jake. I don't. Yes, you you do. call him tracksuit Jake. I call him tracksuit Jake, and you said on this podcast last year you are now calling him turn up the feel good Jake. Turn up the feel good Jake. Um, big fan of ours and he, 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 he in his little element weren't yeah. he did a quiz as well thanks for playing the uh, the bad singing sorry to anyone any, any music lovers sure. doesn't it doesn't sound echoey in that those high ceilings was there anybody at our yeah there was I was going to say that weren't in radio yeah Mikey yeah mm. shall we uh, shall we crash on yeah shall we get on to the listeners problems mm -hmm. here we get oh, coffee cup down before just uh, we've been told off by Who's got his that jacket? What's his surname? Chairman Emeritus Stewart. Chairman Emeritus Stewart. For put, he wouldn't let William put his coffee cup on the table. Shall we go on to the listeners' questions? This is from Lara. Dear William and Jordan, wishing you fellas a wonderful new year. I'm looking forward to all 2024 has to offer, but for now I need some advice. I'm partaking in dry January, mostly because I find my mental health is a lot better when I avoid alcohol. Same, hun. I'd like to try and keep it going post-January too, but wondering Ugh. what is the etiquette for socialising with friends who do drink when you are trying to stay sober. Further, how often do I begin to think about dating as a sober person? I'm afraid people will think I'm terribly boring or no fun. Any advice would be welcome. Many thanks. Lara. Lara, um, I'll admit, I used to be one of these people, and I have since stopped. So when someone had come to a barbecue or a party, you'd go out and go, you're not drinking? Why, what's up with you? Are you pregnant? If somebody's not drinking... <laughs> Let's Why were all... they asking you that? No, you just you say to other people. When oh, somebody's not drinking, let's just say fine. Yes, do not Can pressure I... them. Do you want to get... Yeah, and I used to be like that, and mm. I used to um, feel like that. But if somebody's not drinking for whatever mm. reason, just be like, right, fine. Yes, What's because wrong? if you are... If you think that to have a good time, you have to have a drink, I... that is called a problem. No, it's not. Yes, it I is. I stand by that statement. Like, what? me and you could go out... And I can still have a good time if I don't have a drink. I See, I don't think I can. I can have a good time. That's called a problem. No, I mean, I can have a good time, but everything's better with your drink. 
Well, not everything. Excuse me. At the time of recording... Driving's not very at good. At the time of recording, it's a Thursday morning at 20 past nine and you've nearly downed a gin and the Do not tell me I've got a problem. Because that's the format. You're working till I'm eight doing o'clock this for tonight. F- format reasons. And you're telling me I've got a problem. <laughs> But anyway, I no, you can have fun without drink. You can, but we're talking about this. I'm clearly it mm. was a episode. We should maybe release it one day when we did that escape room when we were on tour. <laughs> we can't release it, Jordan, because the audio doesn't exist. I hated that. Not for me. Stuff like escape rooms and going on bloody um, what's it called, crystal maze things and that. Oh, yeah. Not for me. I'd, I'd much rather be in the pub, mm. which I clearly made known on that day we went to the escape room. Well, when you lay on the floor. Yeah. And refused to do anything. Because it was not for me. I'm such a <laughs> knob, aren't I? I'm such a knob. And that guy, that student that went, right, um, I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and get the pirate. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be back in a minute. It's the, the same guy. He just popped a hat on and came back and went, who are? <laughs> I'm Captain Longbeard and I'll be helping you with today's escape. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, um, if somebody's not drinking. Yeah. Don't pressure them, everybody. Also, Lara, you could look. Whilst people shouldn't pressure you, and if you want... Also, do you want a drink? Yes, I'll have a sparkling water is a drink, uh, so you shouldn't feel bad about that. But what you could do is stick a bit of lime in the sparkling water, just ask for a tonic water, just sort of make it look like you're drinking, mm-hmm. because then just to sort of av- make people avoid having to say, oh, well, you're not drinking, for example. Um, or Also, there are loads of really good... Mikey often has a um, 0% gin I most got, of the time. I got some in for him for New Year's Eve. And he, Did he, you tell him I, that? Yeah, I offered him a couple of times. Oh, I'm sorry. But he weren't up for it. I was oh. like, I've got some uh, non-alcoholic gin in for him. I'm fairly sure he didn't know you had that. I'm sorry. Maybe I it... asked him twice. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, well, do he want, can be very do you want a, a, oh, I know. I said, do you want a non-alcoholic gin and tonic? He went, no more, eh? It's blanked, pal. He's off, he's, Mikey's gone to your hasn't he? Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Um, so o- occasionally. He might have a brandy at the end of a heavy meal, which is a bit like being teetotal and then having brandy. It's a bit weird. Mm. Pick a lane. But, you know, I love him. He's fine. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, Lara, I feel you. I think things are changing. More and more people are realising that actually you shouldn't pressure people to drink. Yeah. Stick with it. And if people do pressure you, potentially they're not your friends. That's what I'd and say. And don't people people won't think you're boring because no. you don't have a drink. Exactly. This is from Anonymous. Dearest William and Jordan, as a teacher, I often run into parents out of school hours. This one incident, however, has oh. led me to needing your advice. This is every I once seen a teacher in W. H. Smith and I couldn't fathom it. I was in my twenties. Well, it's only W. H. Smith. Yeah, I know, but seeing a teacher outside of school is weird. Right. Mm. Okay. I was getting a few bits and pieces from the supermarket, then I spotted one of my students with her mum. I waved, greeted them and moved on. The student's mum nabbed me in the meat aisle. (laughs) A bit personal. Uh, And asked me how her daughter was doing in maths and what her predicted grade was. I politely responded and then tried to avoid them by going down other aisles. I needed... I needed some condoms and lube, and checking that there were no stray students or parents around, I browsed the shelf. Within seconds, that same mum appeared. She started asking me what her daughter could do to improve in maths and if I could recommend a tutor. At this point, I was a little embarrassed, and the student also seemed annoyed with her mum. I bet. I suggested that I contact her when I returned to school and they walk off. walked off. I didn't risk buying any condoms or lube, but at least I had my faggots. Awful meatballs. My husband was not impressed. I think this is from a homosexual. My question is, was my response appropriate and how should I respond in the future? I usually reply to emails at all hours and will speak to parents out and about. However, this just seemed a bit odd and caught me off guard. Should a teacher always be available for an impromptu parents evening, even when purchasing contraception? With thanks, an Anonymous. I think you've, like we said with Laura there, I think we should all agree here now, if you see any teachers outside of school, let's don't ask them about work. I don't think that's fair. Especially not like, and they're pursued yeah, but as well. you know what some pushy parents are like. Yeah, I would simply responded, well, when I'm working, I'll give this some thought, but at the moment I'm yeah. not working. Try not to approach teachers, especially teachers, they get it all. You can say hello. I mean, don't ignore them. They're a human being. If you know them, it's yeah. weird. But hi, how are you? How was your Christmas? Fine. They were long it. hours. Yeah, but not. Um, no, don't ask about what yeah. my child can do to improve. And don't tell them to get loads of holiday because <laughs> that really pisses them off. Yes, well, the, uh, yeah, because they work flipping hard. I know they do. A, honestly, I've got a few friends that are teachers. The, the pre- and now you've got a pre- plan of prep every lesson. Oh yeah, no, I know. Like but yeah, holidays aren't long enough. 
Well, your mum and dad ever bothered about your reports and your grades and stuff? Mine weren't really. No, because I had reports that said things like, I always remember one of my drama teachers, if only all my students were like William, my life would be much easier. Oh. Sticks in my mind. Don't yeah, know why. My only thing was we would just put it like, as long as we weren't bad behaved. Mm. Like, I could get D's in maths, but they weren't bothered. Did you get much D in school? Yeah, quite a few. Mm. Yeah, no, actually, no. I was very average. Very average. I don't know where you're going with you this. You circumnavigated that, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my highest, my highest GCSE was I got a B in food tech. Did you? In and food and PE. Is that a subject? So I kind of balanced it out. Okay. Mm. What was your favourite thing you made in food tech? Uh, cheesecake. Cheesecake. Every, every, every week you had to make it healthier and healthier. So you did like a full fat version at the start and then six weeks later it's like a healthier version. So it's six weeks of cheesecake? Yeah, it's part of my course. Right? I've done this before. Eventually it's just the tin. I come home Empty. with I come home with some cheesecakes one day. Right. And my dad were, I'll never forget it, my dad were asleep on settee. Mm. They were in his army out, in his army um, combats. He probably got home from work early. And he, had, he opened one eye and I went, I've made some cheesecake. Food tech, he went, Fucking sick of cheesecake every week. <laughs> it's cost me a pissing fortune in ingredients, and I'll never forget this quote. Why don't you do a right subject like woodwork, like our Ryan? <laughs> Make us a magazine rack. We had a little magazine rack outside. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Have they still got that? I don't think he has. No guess, no second guesses to me, dad's favorite. You know, James is your mum's favorite. Mm. No second guesses to me, dad's favorite is. Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's the most like him. Well, he's, he's just been promoted to Sergeant Major. Sergeant in Major. In the army. And we should see what my dad got him for Christmas. What did he get him? Some um, Mont Blanc pens or something. Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc pens. Wow. Do you need many of cheap. those in the army? I got a fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Joan of Arc now, aren't you? <laughs> Joan of Arc. Oh, she Medieval. Got burnt, yes, she? with faggots all around her. This is from Christina. Dear William Jordan and E.P. Ben, brackets, travelling. Happy New Year. I hope you can help with my problem. I'm not a native English speaker. My native language is Czech. I'm fluent yeah. in, in English, but I do suffer from an affliction when it comes to the spoken language, which is I tend to pick up various accents very quickly. I can go from Sarah Hansen to Mikey the Builder in a matter of days. You may ask, why is this a problem? Uh, there was... It's so weird. When I was moving out, so I had a removal guy, mm. and he was from, I can't remember where he was from. Uh, I think it was Bulgaria. But he had a Scouse English accent because the guy who taught him. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and when he, he first moved to Liverpool, it's weird. Anyway, go on. Uh, well, I also tend to pick up local slang. For example, when spending time with my friend from Newcastle, I end up saying, aye, it's canny for days. This is entirely involuntarily... This is entirely involuntary and subconscious, and I have to concentrate uh, to undo it. Listening to your podcast practically non-stop for the last two weeks has therefore somewhat altered my accent to have a northern twang. I found myself needing to concentrate to say my after realising I said I've gone to Prague to see my family and I'm missing my dog. My English-speaking friends are dismayed, but also somewhat entertained. However, the serious affliction means that it doesn't take very long for me to sound like I'm mocking whoever I'm speaking to. My dilemma, therefore, is do I own up to this, apologise to people and explain that I'm not needing to take the piss, meaning to take the piss, or do I ignore it and pretend I don't know what is happening, or just level up the concentration and risk looking like I'm constipated whilst trying to have a conversation with someone? Gratefully yours, Christina. Um... Now, answer carefully, because Christina is literally hanging on your every word. I just apologise and say, I'm sorry, I've got this medical condition where... Well, I, it's not medical, is it? I mimic how people talk. Just say, sometimes I pick it up. We all do it. Do you go posher when you go back to Bristol? Um, I don't know, I've never really thought about it. Mikey goes more Yorkshire when he goes back to Yorkshire. Does he actually? Yes. Oh, I, over Christmas, I do. I, I, yeah. I hear myself, I'm going, no, I'm right. Um, are you right? No. I'll have a brew. Yeah. I think I'm fairly... But remember, I mean, this is why I did elocution lessons. Look, this is why I did elocution lessons during lockdown. Clearly. Was because I was spending so much time talking to you. Some of my vowels were going very flat. How does Mikey go more northern, more Yorkshire? All right. That's all I think. No, he doesn't. It's just that there's the odd, there's the odd little sound. I know. Um, Christina, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I think you've probably, I would say... Because you're aware of it, it's probably becoming more of a thing in your head than it probably yeah. is in real life. Yeah. 
Um, you are, of course, very aware of how you sound because you hear yourself all the time. Other people may not hear you as much. So, and look, if someone does pick you up and go, oh, that was a funny sound, or, oh, why have you said it like that? Then you could admit it. But I, if you make it a problem and tell them in advance, they'll then be listening for it. And I would say that would distract from the conversation. Mm. Just, be, just, yeah, just be careful. You did mention there, just be careful with Geordies and Scousers. Because if, um, if, if, if they think you're taking piss, they're, they're, they're known to headbutt. So mm. be quite careful. You're fucking what? what you're making me for? Like, <laughs> just be careful there. Nice. Yeah. Uh, this is from Dean Valentine in Toronto. What a name. Dean Valentine. Sounds like a film. What a name. Yes. Hi, gentlemen. I wanted to share a dilemma from when I lived in a first story flat in Water Gardens, which was the former home of Elton John, as mentioned in his autobiography when he was first starting to become famous. I received a note in my front door one day, which read, and he's put the note here, but I'll read it out. Do you own the first floor flat on the corner overlooking Haviland Drive? Do you get up at about 6am or just shortly afterwards in block capitals? If this is you, do you realise that you can be clearly seen through your bathroom window? I have a wonderful view of you yesterday, stark naked, cleaning your teeth, bending over your wash basin. And on another morning, you were clearly, or do I mean, and I do mean clearly, visible drying yourself off after a bath or shower and more detail than you could wish, and I certainly would wish, was on show to the world. It's not nice. Please get some window covering. My response was to stick it in the window that my neighbour had commented on, and from that time I made a point of being nude more than not. Well, that's a bit weird. All my windows did have coverings, and I never wanted to change the look of the decor. After all, it was a rather posh flat. Do you agree with my approach, or do you think I should have taken a more democratic approach and maybe try to cover the window? Love the podcast. Best, Dean Valentine in Toronto. Probably best day to try and cover the window. Also, who brushes the teeth by like naked? Mm. I find that weird. Do you not? I don't like being no, naked. No, I don't, no. I like to be, yeah. Don't, yeah. Do you not like being naked? No, oh. not really. Fancy. Yeah. Um, Even, you know, I have a little hole in a sheet. You know? I'm sorry? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Very little hole. Um, I would also say... Also, <laughs> can we just deconstruct this letter? The Elton John thing was a complete... And oh, yeah, why have you thrown me off that? I thought, I thought the I letter thought, was oh, here from... here we go. I thought the letter was from Elton John asking if he could come and have a look round or something. Yes, somewhere. it's completely irrelevant to what then happened, but I, mean, I guess it's a flex, mm. as people would say, to tell us that you live there. Um, I mean, I do like the passive aggression of sticking the note to cover. I, I think that's Very quite new. funny. Um, I do like that, but I think maybe some privacy, you, privacy blinds. I don't agree with how they dealt with it. Yeah, I was going to say, the letter could have been nicer. It's written very stroppily in block capitals in a whole range of fonts and colours as well, which I know you can't see, um, but there's the note. But mm. um, yeah, I, I would probably get some... I'd be mortified if my neighbours were like, because they probably think you're a bit pervy, don't they? You can get some privacy film, I think, that sort of blocks out for people from seeing in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or just get some blinds. Or just stop walking around bollock naked, put a dressing gown on. So many options. Final one. This is from Anonymous. Hi, William and Jordan. A while back, I was watching a movie with my girlfriend. We were comfy and spooning under a blanket on the sofa in the upstairs living room. Mm. After a while, one thing led to another and we started getting at it. But we left our top halves clothed. Now, at this point, she lived with her parents and suddenly we heard her father coming up the stairs. So oh. we just froze in place. We were still spooding and covered in the blanket, so there was nothing to see. But on his way to bed, he stopped to give his daughter a kiss on the cheek. This was rather awkward since I was still balls deep. <laughs> was I wrong to wait for him to go to his room and then finish the job? Should we have stopped? What does one do in a situation like this? <laughs> Thanks in advance for your advice. Anonymous. Oh, I think the term balls deep. I mean, I, oh, that's the so, that's, that's, that's so, uh, excuse me, I'm going to swear, that's so fucked up on so many levels. I, regardless of what was going on below, if a couple were, whoever they were, if they were cuddling on a sofa, I think to lean over and give them a kiss is a bit weird. That's quite alarming. And I would just sort of stand in the doorway and wave and go, night. And I think he would have known. Sometimes you can, like, sex has a smell, doesn't it? Does it? Yeah. What does yours smell of? No, you just sometimes, it, you, you know, like you walk in a room and you think, someone's been shagging in here. 
Yeah, I'm that... sorry. No, you do. Come on. You know. How so... many rooms do you walk into? Oh, you know, when you've 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 like walked back into your bedroom, you think, oh yeah, we need to open a window. Do you know, it's some, it's it smells of sin. It, it smell. You can sometimes you can smell sex, can't you? I don't think you can smell sex. I'm sorry. I think you've absolutely lost the plot. You can. You can. Anyway, so he probably would have known. June Divas, if you can smell sex, write in. You can. We'll do it for the bonus in a couple of weeks. Oh, you can. can't but, wait. Um, also, I, I think you probably should have stopped after that. That would have really killed I think the... it probably would have killed the moment. Yeah, yes. would have. Are you still in something? Yeah, okay. Jeez. Fair, fair play. Fair play. Um, that's my advice. You probably should have stopped. It does. It, it, sometimes it, it's got a bit of a... A whiff of clothes. A whiff of... You know, especially in the summer with a sweat and stuff. <laughs> mm. Smells like Billingsgate Fish Market. Uh, anyway, Jordan, what is coming up on the weekend release? Apparently we find out if I ripped off Mikey's impression from a comedian. Oh, well, we'll uh, find out, won't we? Uh, and we'll get feedback from our panto stalwart. Who's that? <laughs> stalwart. Oh, stalwart. 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 A veteran. Don't he present the rest of his politics? <laughs> That's Roy Stewart. <laughs> With me, Rory Stewart. Marvellous. Well, what a love. It's nice to be back. Jordan. It's nice to be back. Sorry, it's been a bit of an extra long episode, but we had loads to catch up on. Uh, remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. So that's when the episodes come out. And if so I've been told that loads of people listen to mm. the Tuesday episode, but not so much the Friday one, which is just as fun. So come yes. on, listen to that. It's just, it's just a bit shorter. It's a little treat for the weekend. So you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesdays and Fridays and you can share us on your socials all week you can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexofmyboss or you can write to William who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self steel envelopes the address for that is on the website sexofmyboss.com see you on Friday see you on Friday see you on Friday